Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 54 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee, poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear. If you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 53. But I must start by asking were you successful? If you were able to do it, leave a comment down below. I am legend, double chest bump. And if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. So how many of you guys were able to do it? Hopefully you were able to figure it out because it built on a lot of the stuff that we did in earlier lessons. So I'm hoping that you guys didn't have too much trouble with it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution. If what was the homework? <clears throat> The homework was for me to get out of your way, for me to get out of your way. And where do I need to come over here? Let's come over here. And uh, what you were supposed to do is we've been working with the NeoPixel. We've been working with the NeoPixel array out of the SunFounder kit. It has eight NeoPixel uh, LEDs. And what we did last week is you had a, a green dot on a red background that was running back and forth. And your homework assignment for this week was to take the NeoPixel array and to cycle it through all the colors of the rainbow. OK, now I hope you guys didn't do this by just defining a bunch of colors like defining 50 colors and then going through those 50 colors. I hope that you were a little bit more. I hope that you were a little bit more. Let me see if I can. I'm trying to get a little Windows management done here. Give me just a second. I hope you guys were a little bit more sophisticated than that. And then I'll show you the way I did it, which I think is a really, uh, a really nice solution. OK, so what we want to do is we want to take that and we want to sweep it through all the colors of the rainbow. So what is the sort of core point that we sh we should start? Well, where could we get the colors of the rainbow? And what I would say is the best thing would be to come to an HSV color wheel, right? We've got the HSV color wheel. We've worked a lot with this in the past as we were working with our RGB LEDs. And you can see that as you start at zero degrees, as you start at as you start at zero degrees here, why does this not like this? Hmm, let me see. Got a, some old stuff that showed up there. I'm sorry. OK, so as you start at zero degrees, yeah, this is really give me just a second here. Why is this? Let's see if that will be happy. OK, that's happy now. OK, so when we start at zero degrees here. When we start at zero degrees here, we are at red. And then as we go around the color wheel, we go red to orange to yellow to green to aqua to pure blue to magenta and then finally back to red. And so if we just go around this color wheel from zero to 360 degrees, we will step through 
all the colors of the rainbow. Okay, so what is the problem? The NeoPixel doesn't want an HSV value. It doesn't want a hue value or a hue saturation value. value. What does it want? It wants RGB. And the HSV color wheel is in what? It's in hue. Okay, so we need the way to go from hue to RGB. So how do we do that? Well, you could go in and you could do a lot of coding and try to figure it out. Or if you are taking this class, if you are taking this class, you should remember that a few weeks ago, we uh, showed how to convert HSV to RGB in MicroPython. And what we did is we created this little uh, function that will do the conversion where you pass it, you pass it a degree, you pass it some number of degrees on the HSV color wheel, you pass it degrees, and then it returns to you the RGB to give you that color, okay? And so let's go ahead and let's just grab that library that we developed all already. So you will need to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. You can use this happy little search bar to search on something like convert HSV to RGB and then you will come to this page and you can come down and you can snag this code and then you can come over to your Thani. You will come over to your Thani and then let's go ahead and let's start with a fresh clean Thani and then let's go ahead and paste that in and all this is is this is just the function and what this function is we define the function we send it degrees like what degree you are and then it will return an R, a G, and a B value it will return to you an R, a G, and a B value that will give you that color now I think this function returns a number between zero and uh, one, one being full strength and zero being off. <clears throat> and so the number is between zero and one to where when we apply this to the uh, NeoPixel, we want a number between zero and 255. So we will have to do a little bit of adjustment and we need to not forget that we need to do that adjustment. But before we come in and let's see, did, let me make sure that I showed you how we had this thing hooked up over here. This is like the third lesson we've done on this, but you have a red wire, which should go to five volts. You have a black wire, which should go to ground. And so five volts I have is physical pin 40 and then the black wire ground is physical pin 38 and then the yellow wire is the control wire and that is physical pin 1 which is GPIO pin 0 so you'll need to hook that up also always have to remind you that with the Raspberry Pi Pico W you can control an arbitrary number of pixels but you can't power an arbitrary number of pixels. Now this is an eight pixel strip and this five volts from the Raspberry Pi Pico W, it has enough current drive to operate eight pixels, but you wouldn't want to go more than eight. So if you go more than eight, you need to power it. You need to power it, not from the Pico W, but you need to power it from an external five volt DC power supply with the current drive necessary for your pixel array. Okay, so bottom line, don't do more than eight pixels using your Pico W or you will fry your Pico W. Okay, so that is always an important reminder. Now I think we are ready <clears throat> to jump in and start coding. So we're going to come over here to this view. And then uh, hopefully you were seeing this. Hopefully I was on this a while ago and you guys were seeing it. Uh, if you weren't, you see that I pasted in here. I hope I switched over to this view, but I just pasted. What I did was I pasted this code from toptechboy.com. I took that and I pasted it here into Thani. And now you can see we have the Thani view and we have the live view. 
<clears throat> the live view of the Pico W. So now we're ready to start coding. Well, we're going to use the NeoPixel, so we need to import NeoPixel, the library, and we're going to be operating through a GPIO pin. So we need to say from machine, we need to import pin like that. And then we usually put delays in there. So it's always good to import time. All right, now we need to set up the NeoPixel. <clears throat> First thing we need to do is what what is the data pin? Well, we're using GPIO pin zero. So I'm going to call it the pixel pin that we use to control. That's pin zero. Now, what is the size of our array? I'll say pick size. <clears throat> pick size is eight, meaning that we have eight pixels in this strip. Now we need to create the NeoPixel object. I'm going to call it picks. You can call yours whatever you want. NeoPixel dot NeoPixel, the library dot NeoPixel, the method, and I need to tell it what pin we're using. Well, the pin we are using is Pix pin that we just set up, and then we are using it at Pix size. So it's telling it that I'm connected to GPIO pin zero, and I have eight pixels in my strip. Okay, now we come down and we set up this that will return, it will return an RGB value corresponding to a position, an angle on the color wheel. Okay, so that is going to make it pretty straightforward. What I need to do here is I just need to come down. I need to come down and I need to create a loop. So I'm going to say while true, when is true, true, true is always true. So we've created an infinite loop. And what I want to do inside of it is I want to walk around that color wheel. I want to march around that color wheel. So I start at zero degrees and I go to 360 degrees. So I'm going to say for I in range, I start at zero and I go to 360 and I go in steps of one degree. Now, just to make sure we're thinking about this right, if I say go to 360, it stops at three. <clears throat> if I say go to 360, it stops at 359. But that's good because since when I started at zero, I go to 359, well, then the next one should be zero. So 360 and zero are the same thing. So this actually is the right way to do it. Now I need to get the RGB color associated with that angle. And so I'm going to say color is equal to get RGB. That's that library that we just got here, get RGB. And what do I need to pass it? I need to pass it the degrees, which is my index I that I am looping on. Okay, now I have the color. What do I need to do? I just need to say pix.write because I'm going to do that rainbow on all the pixels. So I need to pix.write. Ah, I'm sorry. I need to pix.fill with that color that I just got. And now I need to what? pix.write. <clears throat> now let's put a little bit of a delay in time.sleep. <clears throat> of about 0.01 seconds. Could it really be that easy? Could it really be that easy? Guys, that's why I like to do my videos in terms of classes where you learn and the, the learning in the new video builds on what you've done in the past. And so hopefully you guys recognize that we've already solved this problem of getting RGB values based on a position on the color wheel. And if you remembered that, then this project was really very, very simple. I will need you all to hold your breath. Denied. What is this no module named NeoPixel? What is that in line one? Ah, <laughs> okay. You know what? This happened a couple of weeks ago. Down here in the lower corner, I had not hooked my Thani up to my Pico. So I need to right mouse click in the lower right of my Thani and I need to tell it to connect. And then it didn't connect that time because I have a separate window connected. So I need to try one more time. 
Okay, and now it's connected. You might think it was my fault because I hadn't connected Donnie to the Pico W, but really, in fact, it was one of you guys had not hold your breath. I think you know who you are. This time, I need everyone, everyone to hold their breath. Denied. What happened this time? Let me try again. Okay. Everyone, hold your breath. What is that? Can't oh, can't convert float to int. Okay, so what could ah yeah 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 yeah. I warned you about this, but then we forgot to do it. I warned you about this, but then I forgot to do it. So my color, right? The library as it was before is returning a number between zero and one, and the NeoPixel wants a number between zero and two fifty five. So I need to take whatever the number between zero and one is and multiply it by two fifty five on all of these it's pretty bad when i remember it's important and i remind you of it and then i forget to do it okay hold your breath and type <clears throat> okay and then because the r the g and the b was a number between zero and one it is a float and when you may multiply a float by an integer you will get a float and the NeoPixel wants an integer, so I need to go ahead and convert these to integers like that. And then int like that. And then int like that. Okay. Now hold your breath. Let's hope. Boom. Okay. Look at that. Man, we are cycling through the rainbow. And I wish you could see it in person. It is so vivid and so saturated and so beautiful colors. And what are we doing? We're sitting and just stepping around that color wheel and we are turning the NeoPixels every color on the color wheel, which is every color on the rainbow. Okay, guys, this has been kind of a quick lesson but it builds on the things we learned in the past. Hopefully it was a good reminder and it was an ability for you guys to build those skills and reinforce those skills that you had done in earlier lessons. I'm gonna give you one more homework assignment. Okay, what you see is, you see that we are cycling through every color of the rainbow at the same time for every pixel. What I want you to do is I want you to have a running rainbow. I want you to create a running rainbow where this one, this first one is running through every color of the rainbow. But as you go across, you also see a rainbow. So when I go across here, all of these aren't red at the same time. All of these aren't blue at the same time that this should, as you go across, if you freeze an instant of time, you should see a rainbow here then this pixel moves to the next color of the rainbow, and then the whole rainbow is shown again. So you're sort of cycling through the rainbow in time, but in position, at any instant in time, you will see what? The rainbow. And so it's like a rainbow that is flowing across the screen, across the strip in position, as the rainbow is evolving in time, a running rainbow. And so it is going through the colors this way in space, and then every instant it is going through the rainbow in time. Does that make sense? How could I say it any clearer? If I look at this by itself, it's a running rainbow. If I look at the next one by itself, it's a running rainbow, running rainbow, running rainbow. Each one of them is a running rainbow. But the running rainbows are not in sequence with each other. They're not, they're not synced with each other. That this one is delayed from this one. Which means that if you freeze time and look at the colors across, you will see a rainbow. So we have a rainbow in space. And that rainbow in space is flowing in time. I don't know how I can say it any clearer than that. That's strange. It's like we've got 
we've got kind of a shadow there. I don't know what's going on out there with my camera. I'll have to go look. It looks like maybe something, maybe something's gotten up on my camera. I don't know. But anyway, that's your homework to create a rainbow that is flowing in space and is flowing in time. And I will show you that next week. Hey, as always, I want to give you guys a shout out who are supporting me over at Patreon. Appreciate you standing with me. You guys are the ones that are keeping me in the game. Also, you can help me by giving me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel when you do make sure you ring that bell so that you will get notifications of future lessons and as always most importantly share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos paul mccorder with toptechboy.com i will talk to you guys later <laughs>